Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to talk about why deep neural networks are better than their shallow counterparts. The first thing that I would like to talk about is the expressivity of deep neural nets and why they can approximate the same functions with much fewer neurons than shallow neural networks. And I would like to start by looking at this data which can easily be classified using a single neuron as depicted here. However, for data that looks like that, where we have four regions, a single neuron is not sufficient and we have to adjust our neural network architecture accordingly. Firstly, we add a neuron that separates the data horizontally, and then we add a second neuron that separates the data vertically. Finally, a neuron on the second layer must be added to distinguish between regions. It must be said that this algorithm of building neural networks where you add a new neuron to create a new region is very powerful because it has been mathematically proven to be able to approximate any kind of function. Let's take for instance this data and let's try to build a neural network using this algorithm. Firstly, we add a neuron to separate data horizontally. Then we add another neuron to separate data vertically. And then we add a neuron to separate the data in each corner. And this algorithm allowed us to classify this data using only seven neurons. And using these seven neurons, we were able to create eight linear piecewise regions. Okay, and now let's see what happens when we do not stack neurons in a single layer, but we stack them layer by layer. How many neurons we need to create to get the same number of regions. As always, we make the first region to separate data horizontally. Then when we pass the output to the next layer, we don't have the same data as before, but the representation of it. And I think the best way to think about this operation is to see the layer transformation as folding the space. So what we can do here is to fold the upper part of the plane to the lower part in accordance to our decision boundary. And here we have the representation of data as seen by the second neuron. And we can choose to separate the data vertically. And again, we can fold the space using the decision boundary. Now we see the representation of the data as seen by the third neuron. And here we can choose to separate the data on the diagonal. And again, we can fold the space using the decision boundary of this neuron. And when we unfold the space, we basically get the same decision boundaries as in the shallow network, but this time by using only three neurons instead of seven. And this is a very powerful thing because by adding neurons on depth, we can exponentially increase the number of linear piecewise regions that our network can approximate. For instance, if we fold the space one more time with another neuron, what we obtain are 16 linear piecewise regions with only 4 neurons, which for a shallow network to obtain using the previous algorithm, it would have needed exponentially more neurons. However, one might argue that the regions created in this way are not really independent, which is absolutely true due to the implied symmetry, but this might be one of the very reasons why neural networks generalize so well, because this symmetry makes it harder to overfit on data. Another argument that I saw thrown around in the literature for deep neural network is that the representation produced by the previous layer can be used by the next layer to produce more abstract features. And this can be visualized quite nicely in convolutional neural networks where the first layer learn to detect features like edges, the next layers learn to detect more abstract features like textures or small patterns. And as we go deeper and deeper into the network, the neurons become more active to things like small objects such as wheels, eyes, poles, as illustrated down here. And so on until we get to the final layers where the neurons learn to combine the previous representation and become more active to even more abstract things like animals, people or cars, which might be even the things that we are trying to teach the neural network. 
However, although this is a nice interpretation of what neural nets learn and might justify the building of deep neural models, I believe it should be taken with a grain of salt because, as you probably know, neural nets are in general quite susceptible to adversarial attacks and we can design a noise in such a way that some neurons to which we have attributed some semantical meaning become very active when this noise is seen. So yeah, these are basically two of the reasons of why I believe neural nets are built in the deficient way. If you know any other reasons why, please let me know by commenting below and if you enjoy watching this video, please leave a like to it, this would help me a lot and until we see each other again, I hope you have a wonderful time. Bye bye.